that maybe looking back it wasn't the right decision? Perhaps not. I was loved, I was cared for, I was um, that's it, that's, that's what one wants. You may have heard that John McEnroe and Tatum O'Neill broke up, however the real reason why will shock you. But before we dive in, there is a tennis player whose on-court grunt has been officially recorded to be louder than an aircraft. Who could it be you wonder? Stay till the end to find out. And as always, if this video serves up some tennis joy, volley that like button and backhand a subscribe for more ace-worthy tennis content like this. Let's get to know our leading man first. Picture this, John McEnroe tennis whiz, known for both his fantastic gameplay and a temper that sparked fireworks. He won seven Grand Slam titles, but his life off the court was just as interesting. In a chat with Sunrise, following the release of his biopic, McEnroe, he had a lot to say. It's a journey, he said, referring to his life. He thinks people will be more interested in his personal journey than in his tennis matches. His journey took an unexpected turn with a tumultuous relationship. When he said, I went through a difficult divorce and then was able to come out the other side and get a second chance. I think a lot of people relate to that also. He was referring to his relationship with Tatum O'Neill. O'Neill's fame ignited when she was just 10, clinching an Oscar for her role in Paper Moon, a film where she shared the screen with her real-life father, Ryan O'Neill. Yet behind the glamour and the accolades, her personal life was fraught with struggles. She was raised by her father in the absence of her drug-addicted mother, Joanna Moore. But her father's Hollywood lifestyle was far from an ideal environment for a young girl. Being in the public eye from such a young age, O'Neill faced challenges that no child should. At 15, under the misguided advice of her father, she started using cocaine to lose weight, a habit that quickly spiralled into a full-fledged addiction. Her adolescence was overshadowed by this dependency, stunting her personal growth and establishing a foundation for further struggles in her adult life. By the time she met McEnroe, O'Neill had a severe drug problem. She was just 22 and McEnroe was 26. Despite their individual issues, there was a strong attraction between them. O'Neill told ABC News, he was very good looking. I thought he was charming. It was sort of a chemical attraction or physical attraction, a love at first sight kind of thing. However. And to have sort of neither one of those in a way, like the end of the marriage and the career, that was, you know, that was a lot to handle. That seemed a bit overwhelming. The passionate love story quickly turned sour. The couple had three children, Kevin, Sean and Emily. Their marriage was marked by O'Neill's struggle with drugs and McEnroe's temper, creating a tense and volatile environment. After six years, their relationship ended in divorce in 1994, leaving both of them emotionally shattered. And to have sort of neither one of those, in a way, like the end of the marriage and the career, that was, you know, that was a lot to handle. That seemed a bit overwhelming. The divorce impacted O'Neill severely. She lost custody of their children and spiralled into a heroin addiction. The void left by her children was filled with more drugs, a cycle that seemed almost inescapable. It was a dark period in her life, filled with pain and suffering. McEnroe had his own set of challenges. He had to balance his personal life, which was far from easy. He had six children in total, a responsibility that proved quite challenging. He admitted to being overprotective and later, as he grew older, learned to be more flexible. He confessed, I was not easy to live with and the kids have borne some of that brunt. Over time, both McEnroe and O'Neill managed to pull themselves out of their respective dark times. 
O'Neill in particular demonstrated resilience by overcoming her drug addiction and working towards sobriety. This period marked a significant turning point in her life, reaffirming her strength and resilience. In 2015, McEnroe and O'Neill were seen together in public at a reading for their son Kevin's book, Our Way. O'Neill said, John was really nice to me. I would say there isn't a relationship, but there is respect now. Three years after the stormy divorce from Tatum O'Neill, John McEnroe was standing on shaky ground. Juggling his life as a public figure with the chaos in his private world wasn't easy. Just when he thought he'd taken enough hard hits, love knocked on his door again in 1997. This time it was Patti Smith, a woman who would give his life a much needed turn. As McEnroe said in a 2018 interview, Patti was his second lease on life. When he started dating her, he was unsure about stepping into a serious relationship again. He'd just gone through a bitter divorce, was grappling with his status as a single parent, and was treading the difficult waters of celebrity life. But Patty was not just another relationship. She was something else entirely. McEnroe's agent, Gary Swain, even considered Patty to be the best investment John ever made. Now, that's a punchy statement, isn't it? It makes you think, a woman as an investment, it's not about money, it's about emotional investment. It's about the trust, commitment and resilience that Patty brought into John's life. She was a lifeline, juggling his tennis career with the responsibilities of being a father to his children was like walking a tightrope for McEnroe. Patty stepped in, not just as a partner, but as a rock solid support system. Despite the circus around them, she remained steady, helping John steer his life into calmer waters. She even put her own career on hold for a while to ensure the family found its footing again. Patty and John both had to navigate complex dynamics, the personal baggage from John's past, his ever demanding career, and the role of being a step parent for Patty. They had their plates full. Yet, they worked together as a team, making each other stronger. When McEnroe met Patty, he wasn't looking for love. He had enough on his plate. But as fate would have it, love found him. Their first date was like a breath of fresh air for McEnroe. He saw something in Patty that he didn't expect, a spark that promised better days. So he took the plunge, and it was the best decision he ever made. Together, Patty and John built a life that was more than just a relationship. It was a partnership, a shared journey where they learned, grew, and became better individuals. It was not just about picking up the pieces, it was about building something new, something beautiful. Together, they turned a new leaf in their lives, showing the world that love does give second chances, even when you least expect it. So that's the tale, folks, of John McEnroe and Tatum O'Neill. We all have our struggles, our own journeys to undertake. Like McEnroe and O'Neill, we too can navigate through the stormy weather and emerge stronger on the other side. Life is a game of tennis, filled with unforced errors and winning shots. And now, back to our trivia. Maria Sharapova's tennis court battle cry has been recorded at an astounding 101 decibels. Yes, you heard that right. Her grunt is louder than the roar of a motorcycle, more deafening than a lawnmower's incessant buzz, and heck, it even surpasses the racket caused by a small aircraft's landing. That's no overblown statement, it's a recorded fact. Her grunt is on par with an ambulance siren and falls a mere five decibels short of a lion's roar. Now that's something to roar about. But wait, there's more. In the grand opera of on-court grunting, Sharapova is not even the loudest. That crown goes to Michelle Larcher de Brito, whose own performance hits a record-breaking 109 decibels. So, hats off to the brave souls who stand across the net from these vocal virtuosos. Not only do they have to face blistering serves and killer backhands, they do so under a sonic assault that would make a lion say, 
Could you keep it down, please? And that, my friends, is game, set and match for this episode of Glam Slam Tennis. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a moment of the action and what we have in store. Until next time, stay fabulous and ace those serves.